Hello, this is a video on paths between thermodynamic states. I am basically following my way through Young and Friedman's University Physics, and we're in chapter 19, and this is section three. This is a very short section, about the equivalent of a page, maybe a page and a half in the book, uh, but it lays the groundwork for the next video, which is on internal energy. Got a little piston in the background there, if you see there. Okay, so paths between thermodynamic states. So a thermodynamic process, which is a, like a heat exchange kind of process, it can get to the same destination by more than one path. Uh, you can uh, expand, uh, you can uh, decrease the pressure uh, and then increase the volume, for example. Or you can increase the volume and then increase the pressure. So the order that you do things in, um, it matters is what we're, that's the basic point of this video. The order and the, the way in which you go from an initial state to a final state matters. You can get from state one at a certain pressure and volume to state two at a certain pressure and volume um, through, uh, it even used the word infinite. Young and Friedman used the word infinite number of different ways to get from point A uh, to point B. And what, what we find out uh, in this very short section, is that the work done by the system, the work that is done in this process, it not only depends on where you start and where you end. So you can't calculate how much work is done by knowing where the process started and where the process ended. You have to know the path that it took to get from initial state to final state. The work done by the system depends not only on the initial and final states, but also on the intermediate states, that is, the path that you took. I mean, just to give you a stupid example, uh, I used to live in Indiana, and right now I live in New York. There are many different ways to get here. I could have gone through Texas to get here. I could have gone through Canada to get here. I went across the north of Ohio and through a little bit of Pennsylvania. I took, tried to take the most direct path. And let me, let me say that it took less work to get from Indiana to New York taking that straight path than if I'd have gone through Florida. This is common sense. And so uh, this is the same with, with uh, process involving not only work, but heat as well. Of course, that involved heat too, right? Burned a lot of gas. So the work done depends on the path, not just on the beginning and end of the process. Uh, again, I, uh, not wanting to violate copyright, I've done my own scribble. Um, this illustrates it very easily. So let's say I'm, I'm trying to go from pressure one to, to pressure two and from volume one. So P1 V1 at one to P2 V2 at two, okay? Let's say I'm trying to go from one to two, okay? There are different paths I can take. So for example, I can keep the pressure the same, but increase the volume first and then decrease the pressure down to two. Now, I've gotten from one to two, same path, but the area under, okay, this is the, the work, the work done is the area under. The work done here is pretty substantial, comparatively speaking. I mean, look at this one. If I wanna do the least work, let's say I'm lazy. Uh, if I wanna do the least work possible, it, it looks like it would be best for me to first decrease the pressure and then increase the volume because then the area under, under it is very small, very little work done here. If I go straight or curvy uh, from one to two, you can see it's gonna be somewhere in between, between these, these two. But what you can see from this illustration is that uh, the amount of work done is not just where you start and where you end, but the path that you took to get there. Okay, so what about heat and the path that you get to there? Well, it's gonna be exactly the same, just like work, the amount of heat that's exchanged in a thermodynamic process depends not only on the initial and final states that you went from A to B, but also on the path you took to get between them. So um, basically what we, what we end up with, this is setting us up for the next section. The next section is on something called internal energy. And there we're going to see that even though the, the path changes the work done and the path changes the heat done, that it doesn't change the overall uh, change in internal energy from start to end. That's the next video. 
A um, couple other things before we go, then the section's pretty much over. The, the, the one, one thing that follows from what we're saying here is you, you can't really say that a body has a certain amount of heat or a body has a certain amount of work. It's really the difference um, that tells you something. We can only really speak of changes in heat or changes in work. One other final thing. Um, we, one of the illustrations talks about free expansion. They, they talk about having a piston with a partition in it where you break the partition which allows a noble gas to expand into the space without really doing any work. Um, and here, here is something that experiment has demonstrated, that when an ideal gas undergoes such an expansion as this, there is no temperature change. Well, that's it. It's a very short section, setting us up for uh, our next section, which is on internal energy. Basically what it says is, it's not just the initial and final state, that tells you how much work is done or how much heat is exchanged. You have to know the, the path that was taken in between. Very important concept. This has been a video on paths between thermodynamic states.